Transforming people, transforming cities. Manor Mission Church invites you to The Gospel Transforms Life. The Gospel Transforms Life at Barking Methodist Church, 39 London Road, Barking, Essex. The Gospel Transforms Life and be transformed. The ancient of the great name we praise immortal Amen Now it's time for us to hear the word of God Today Pastor Philippa Dancy will be speaking to us on the topic building up your most holy faith from Jude Verse 20. So with a clap offering, let us welcome Pastor Philippa Dancy to share the word of God with us. Amen. The Lord is good all the time. The Lord is good. Blessed be his holy name. Once again, let's pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we've, have, we've partaken of this very element, may it bring that transformation, that renewal of mind, renewal of our soul in relationship with your Holy Spirit. Father, may we be empowered from on high. May we be enlightened. May we walk in the light, not in the darkness. May we overcome our shortcomings unto perfection. For your word declares that, be ye perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. May you rise up unto perfection. May you rise up onto a higher ground in the name that is exalted above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And Father, we thank you this very hour. We pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we've come before your presence, Lord, to hear your word. The word that is so powerful that it divides the soul and the spirit, divides the marrow and the bone brings out the intents of the hearts of men we pray oh god as we hear your word may our life never be the same lord may we be educated in the realms of the spirit may we receive divine knowledge and wisdom from on high may we be above our enemies may we have the advantage in dealing with this very life that at the end of it all we will lift up the banner of the lord and declare your praise that indeed our god is the conqueror our god is the king of all kings our god is the god of all gods our god is the maker of the heavens and the earth and our god is a faithful god master we thank you in jesus name and let the saints say amen, amen. this very hour i'm very excited to declare to you that build up your most holy faith. It's a command not from me, but from the Lord. Build up your most holy faith. It's using most to, the, to identify the sort of faith you ought to build upon. Your most holy faith. Trying to give comparisons to what you have believed in. We normally say that we believe. But we believe in what we only know in our heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I watch a film and then in the film, I just saw a glimpse of it. And then the man said that, you know, women believe in money. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and it sounds so funny 
<laughs> to me. He said, I do you know what women believe. They believe in money. They don't believe in what you are showing up. They don't believe in your car. They believe in money. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> it sounds so funny, but <laughs> in a way, it reveals certain realities in life. Not all that believe, not all those who declare that they believe, <laughs> really mean what <laughs> you are thinking about. <laughs> but here, Jude is trying to emphasize upon on a particular issue that build up, build up your most holy faith. Build up your most holy faith. He began by writing this very letter to edify the church. But in his introduction, he wanted to talk about our common salvation, the very foundation upon which we are to build this very faith. Then at a point, he decided that, no, let me tackle those people who want to deviate the course of our faith. Hallelujah. So from the verses to a four, it's only one chapter, to the end, he really wrote about the very people who want to deviate from the very common faith that we have. Therefore, we will look at certain foundations of our faith. The reason is that you must know the foundation before you can build upon it. Do you understand that? Your amen is weak. Amen. Are you going to build anyhow? Any building in this world is built upon a foundation. Is it true or false? I want to interact with you. I don't want to be talking and then being quiet on me. I say any foundation in this world, they have to put something on it. But what will be built upon will determine the sort of foundation that is, has been laid. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you understanding me? Yes. Now, many are, uh, some people are making fun of our faith. Why? They just can't figure out the sort of foundation upon which that so-called church was built upon. Where they have ended up having um, gay pastors. And they come out boldly to say that I'm gay. Totally contrary to what? The scriptures. So to the public or to the ordinary man who even doesn't believe in what you are declaring, he would try to find out that upon what foundation was this church built? Praise God. Hallelujah. Some people also have become so biased on a particular aspect of the gospel by saying that come to Jesus and you will be rich. And they turn it to prosperity what? Gospel. Hallelujah. Nobody is against prosperity and nobody wish to be poor either. Hallelujah. But they have become so biased that they've lost the very foundation upon which we ought to build upon. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember there was a preacher he preached about this kind of biased gospel. Rich, riches, become rich. Do that and you become rich. Give more money and you become rich. And so on and so forth. The church took him to court. He ended up being so rich that his dog, he put a gold chain around the dog. He was using a gold cup. Hallelujah. To drink his water. <laughs> At the end of the day, they took that preacher man to court and he went to jail. In the jail, he started reading the Bible again. And then he wrote a book entitled it, I Was Wrong. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I won't mention the preacher's name. But you can search it on the net. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was wrong. So you must question yourself upon what foundation am I building my Christian faith? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 
First Corinthians chapter three. If you can read for me, I'll be very grateful. But if you can't read, I'm there already. Yes, verse ten. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Verse ten. It says that. According to the grace, the special endowment for my tax of God bestowed on me, like a skillful architect and master builder, I laid the foundation and now another man is building upon it. But let each man be careful how he builds upon it. For no other foundation can any one lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. But if anyone builds upon the foundation, whether it be with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each one will be plainly, openly known, shown for what it is. For the day of Christ will disclose and declare it because it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test and critically appraise the character and worth of the work each person has done. If the work which any person has built on this foundation, any product of its efforts whatever survives this test, he will get his reward. But if any person work is burned up, he will suffer the loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here, Paul also wrote to the Corinth church, emphasizing upon what? The foundation. Hallelujah. Why? We are building a life. And this very life has to have a foundation upon which we can what? Build a very good life. If the foundation is wrong, if the foundation is weak, if the foundation is made of a material that does not conform to the sort of building we are going to put on, you must know that this very building will crumble. Hallelujah. So for Paul, he's saying that, brothers, according to the grace that was endowed me, praise God, according to the grace that was endowed me of God, and the master built as a a skillful architect and a master builder, I laid the foundation and now another man building upon it. But let each be careful how he builds upon it. Amen. Amen. This is writing to a particular group of people. That is why he uses uh, certain phrases, a master builder, a skillful man like me, but somebody else was building upon it. He planted the church, left the church, and somebody is pastoring this very church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Due to the report he received, he has to write to them to guide them that they shouldn't deviate from the very foundation he had laid. Hallelujah. But we have come to know that there is one common foundation, one common factor that casts across all who profess Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. There are three things that identify him. He died. Hallelujah. He he died on the cross. He was buried. Praise God. On the third day, he arose from the grave in power and in glory. In a glorified body, he arose and ascended unto heaven. Everyone in the world who does not believe this very thing characteristics of Jesus has another foundation. Amen. Amen. This is the bedrock 
of our faith. So for Jude to tell us that build your most holy faith, build upon your most holy faith is referring to this very thing. Comparing all that you believe in, do not lose focus on the very foundation that Christ laid for us. So in Paul's assertion to the Corinth church, he says that what? There is only one foundation that has been laid. There isn't any other foundation. Praise God. There isn't any other foundation. There is only one man who died on the cross of Calvary. Praise God. There is only one man who was under the earth for three days. There is only one man who rose up from that very grave in a glorified body praise God therefore believe and continue to believe and build upon that very belief hallelujah Amen. let's turn to Hebrews 11 When Paul was talking about faith, though the right, it wasn't introduced that it's a Paul, uh, uh, one of the Paul letters, but we know by the letter that it was Paul who wrote this very book. When you read by context, you will know that it is this very man who wrote this very thing. So he says that now faith, Hebrews 11, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed, of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality faith perceiving as rare fact which is not revealed to the senses i'm reading from the amplifier so it will be different from your reading he really expounded what faith is say now faith now faith so the faith is now it is not tomorrow. Our believing in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that resurrection power, that raising from the dead, that power is available at all times. Praise God. That power is available to heal you. That power is available to turn every situation round. That power is available to change a poor nation to become a rich nation. That power is available to make a, a, an incurable disease curable in Jesus' name. That power is now. It is not tomorrow. So it's a matter of what? Believing. And who activated this very power? This very foundation I talked about. He died. The moment you lose the fact that he died, then your sin still remains in you. That is why it's important to know what you believe. So don't just go about that word. Oh, they are the same. We are worshiping the same God. It is not true. They don't believe that he died. So how can it be the same? So they are different from us. Those who don't believe that he died, they are different. Though they will talk about that we know Jesus, they are lying to you. You know about him, but you don't believe in him. But we know for fact, we know by our own spirit, testifying with the spirit of God, that Jesus died for my sins. And just as I believed in that, I realized that a burden had been taken from me, guilt. The power of guilt that comes from the devil has been taken from my mind. I don't feel like I'm guilty anymore coming before the father. So if you don't understand his death, that indeed he died, you have lost your faith. You have believed in another gospel. He was buried. What does it mean? Indeed, my sins also was buried with him. My, the curse upon me, the curse in your family was buried with him. So you can't come to the house of God and say that the curse 
is still following me from my family. You have been exonerated from that very curse from your family. Why? You have believed in the one who took that curse and buried it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That sickness they claim that it is in that family line. It is in that DNA. It is minus you. Amen. By faith. If it is coming on you, it will end. Amen. It has to end. That curse has to stop. By the blood of Jesus. We must know what we have believed in. And build upon that. Not losing that very foundation. The moment you lose that very foundation. Your whole life is destroyed. If the foundation is destroyed. The righteous man also is destroyed. I'm paraphrasing it. If the foundation of the righteous man is destroyed, that righteous man's life also is destroyed. So you must know the very foundation upon which you are building. So Paul telling the church that now faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. In the King James, now faith, in the Amplified, says that now faith is assure, the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. When you buy a land, they give you a title deed. So he's trying to let us understand that our faith is the title deed. Hallelujah. Why? It has an evidence. It has an evidence that indeed our Jesus died. Our Jesus was buried. He arose from the grave and ascended unto heaven. The power that raised him from that grave, grave is still working. It's still working upon people who still assess that very power. This is what Paul is trying to say. That now that faith, that is how it is. And evidence of things not seen is still working just by professing that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, is my King. For by faith, trust, holy favor born of faith, men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained good reports. If we are to write another Bible, no, no book can contain it. Because I believe that each and every one who had encountered this Jesus I am talking about has a testimony, living testimony, that their life has moved from darkness to light, from death to life. Hallelujah. From sickness to health. From poverty to riches. Abundance riches. Abundant life. This is our testimony. Living testimony. And each and every one can write a book about it. That this is how I encountered this Jesus. Upon the same foundation. So he said that men of faith, men who believed, men who believed this very invisible God, who created the invisible and the visible, who brought things from the invisible into reality, this very God, whoever believed in him, had a good report. So he started a catalog of those people he can remember. Say, by faith, I understand that wells during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, equipped with their in intended purpose by the word of God. Who would have known? If he, how would the scientists have a premise to search? But they found out from the Bible 
as Moses revealed that God called the world into being. He commanded what? The waters to separate from the earth. So at a point, it was water covering that very, this very earth. But there was a command that waters should separate from the earth by the word. So Paul is affirming that what? By faith, word was spoken and water separates from the earth. That the sea shouldn't cross its boundary to cover the earth. That's why we have had to build houses upon. And we can go to the seaside and swim and come back to earth. Hallelujah. Verse 4, Hebrews 11. By faith, Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Verse 5. Because of faith. Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven so that he did not have a glimpse of death. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please and to be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists. Hallelujah. And he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. He proceeded, verse 7, by faith Noah, being forewarned by God concerning events of which we yet there was no visible sign, took heed and diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark for deliverance of his own family. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed, and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went through, he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was, go, he was to go. By faith, he dwelt as a temporary resident in the land which was designated in the promise of God through Though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow hers with him of the same promise. For he was waiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Hallelujah. He was looking for what? A country. Other versions say he was looking for a country whose builder is God. Hallelujah. And that very faith Abraham had is what has come to our generation. God himself. God himself. Coming down from heaven. Taking the flesh of man. Revealing his utmost love for man and his glory. This was the expectation of Abraham. Hallelujah. And if we are to continue with the catalog of faith, it is Jesus. Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, and Jesus' resurrection that cuts across all of the signs of what man can believe in. The totality of all that we can believe in is found in Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes. Th there is nothing beyond him. Because the most fearful thing on this very earth, since ancient of days, that is death. No one was able to overcome. No one was able to overturn the curse pronounced in the Garden of Eden. But this man, Jesus, the son of the living God, has turned round, 
has cancelled that curse pronounced over man by the virtue of his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. Has turned round all evil civilization. Has turned round all kinds of religion. So you can never do anything with his truth. You can never do any, you cannot form any religion out of it. Because he's God. His words cast across all kinds of conceptions, all kinds of misconceptions, and every kind of philosophy, whatever knowledge it is. His knowledge surpasses all. So he declares, I am the truth. I am the way. No one has ever declared that. No religious founder has ever declared that. Why? God has manifested in flesh and seen by angels, witness unto the Gentiles, taken up into glory. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Without him, nothing was made. Praise God. This same word became flesh and dwelt among us and will be held the glory as of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. I just like that. It's as if it was calculated. It's a full of grace and truth. Why? At a point, grace will finish its work. And it will, it will, it, you will only see the truth. <laughs> Why? The grace was added to the truth just for our salvation. Amen. Amen. So at a point, grace will finish its work. And when grace finishes its work, it will, it will remain only the truth. That is where we call judgment. Because truth you can't do anything about truth. You can't overturn truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. When the truth reveals himself to you, there's nothing you can do about it. That is why at the court, when they are trying to investigate the truth about an issue, when the truth comes out at the court, the one who has been defending for years becomes silent. Then they will ask him, do you have anything to say? He said, no. <laughs> Why? The truth has been revealed <laughs> in its totality in Jesus. So when the Gnostics started propagating all kinds of um, um, theological debates and so on, that um, you must be totally spiritual before you can obey this very law and so on. Or the flesh people are like that and the spirit people are like that and so on. Gnosticism. Then Paul wrote to the Colossae, he said, look, the fullness of God <laughs> dwell in him bodily. Hallelujah. Whatever you are talking about God is in sin in Jesus. The totality of God. It is seen in him bodily. So you can't distinguish his spirit from his body. He took flesh because what? He wanted to save us from that sin of flesh. Condemned it on the cross of Calvary and buried it with our curses and all kinds of things. All kinds of evil we can think of. And buried it and came out with that glorified body. Say, if you believe in me, you will never be the same. Your sins will be eroded away. And immediately you become the righteousness of God. For your old life has been taken away. And now you have become a new man. So Jude says to us, Jude, verse 17, it's only one chapter. Don't look for many chapters. Before Revelation, verse 17, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions which were made by the apostles 
the special messengers of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. They told you beforehand in the last days, in the end time, there will be scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their own ungodly passions. It is these who are agitators, setting up distinctions and causing divisions, merely sensual creatures, carnal, worldly minded people, devoid of the Holy Spirit and destitute of any higher spiritual life. Hallelujah. Amen. So this very verse, for instance, describes all that we are seeing in Christianity, the so-called Christianity in our present day, following their sensual desires, and so on. Worldly-minded people, devoid of the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, how can you come and stand on television and say that I, I, I've been uh, uh, this thing, uh, gay for a long time, but now I'm coming out boldly to tell the public? <laughs> Somebody who puts clerical at the neck, he said, I have blessed many marriages. <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ, what kind of foundation has the man built upon? That was the question I asked. What kind of gospel did the man read in his theology school and now he's in the pulpit preaching to people, blessing them? He said, I have been uh, Jesus Christ. See, this is what uh, Jude was described. This is how he described them. They are carnal, worldly, following their own passions. Hallelujah. Amen. So if somebody comes out like that, what would the ordinary man also do? So you will say that, oh, I can't be that and still be a Christian. What, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I, I can't marry to three wives and I'm a Christian. What's wrong with that? I can do all kinds of, I can be bestial, I, I practice that bestiality. People who sleep with animals and be a Christian. What's wrong with that? I wonder how they read their Bibles or whether they have even seen anything of that sort in their scriptures. Praise God. They follow their passion, carnal, minded, without the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, build yourselves up. Hallelujah. You, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice higher and higher praying in the holy spirit i love that that means your level of spirituality is not satisfactory hallelujah Amen. god is expecting you to move on to another level tell your neighbor another level another level, another level. praise god he wants you to move to another level. Don't remain where you are now. Because there are many uh, uh, heights he has set before you. That is why even Paul, in his writing to the Philippians, Philippians 3.10, that he said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He was upon all what God did through him. He was still aspiring to get to a higher level. That I may know him. I may know him. He was still searching for a higher relationship with him. So don't remain where you are. That is not it. There is a higher level which God is looking up to us that we will reach. Amen. Amen. But you, verse 20, Beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Hallelujah. Make progress. Rise like an edifice. Hey. Matthew 5, the verse 13 to 16, he says that what? You are the salt, and you are like a building upon a mountain top. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the light. 
in the household. And that light has to put what? On the candlestick for it to shine for the household to see. So therefore, you must be an edifice. As he says over here, rise up like an edifice because many are looking up to you. But you've not realized it. Hallelujah. Amen. Your family members, your immediate neighbors are looking up to you. Why? You profess that you are a Christian. You have identified yourself what? With a greater light. So those in the darkness can only see through you. Amen. Amen. So if you don't manifest the fullness of Christ, of his stature, those people in the darkness are going to hell. Praise God. Maybe you have not realized your significance. But I urge you, I beseech you, beloved, build up. Tell your neighbor, build up. Build up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, praying in the Holy Ghost is not necessarily maybe speaking in tongues. Maybe you don't have that utterance. But as you begin to pray intensively, the Holy Spirit can even give you a song you have not realize the, the meaning of that very song. And then you will burst out in singing that song. It's all form of what? Prayer. You are, you are praying but singing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. But not necessarily maybe speaking in an unknown tongue that you are what? Praying in the Holy Spirit. At times, it happens to me. I would... Uh, a song will just drop in my spirit and I will begin to sink in my room and all of a sudden I can feel that the room has changed. Why? The Holy Spirit brought out that song in my spirit. So it comes in different forms. At times your meditation will be different. Why? Because what? Your mind, your heart, your soul, all is on him. Amen. Amen. Pray in the Holy Spirit. As Paul said, pray with all kinds of prayer. In songs, in words, in spiritual songs, and so on. Build up your, holy, your most holy faith. Don't be reluctant. Don't rest on the very level you are. There are many Levels God wants you to climb up to him. He started with Peter. He has never walked on the sea before. The Lord bid me to come to you. Say the come, Peter. He started coming to him. The moment he realized that he was Peter the fisherman, he started sinking. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the Lord picked him up, trying to teach him that he can do that. He can do the impossible as he was doing. Likewise, you can also do it. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that same spirit is upon you. Amen. And that same spirit is guiding you. Amen. And that same spirit will lead you to your destination. He says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So never think that you will ever lose. You will gain. You will progress. You will ever see the light at the end of the tunnel. You will lift up the banner of the Lord and declare his praise in Jesus' name. Can you rise up on our feet? Most blessed most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Jude.
verse 20 say after me beloved build up your most holy faith beloved build up your most holy faith the lord bless you the lord uphold you with his mighty righteous hand the lord utter your footsteps in pleasant places may you see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living may all your heart desire be fulfilled in the name of jesus may the outpouring of his giftings in the holy spirit be deposited in you may you reach out to the very level he is expecting you in the name that is exalted above every name jesus the lord jesus our savior hamashiach our messiah our paracletos holy spirit our helper be with you forevermore in jesus name i pray amen thank you pastor adansi let's clap unto the lord amen that was pastor philip adansi speaking to us on building up our most holy faith and we hope you have been blessed by this message he mentioned that if our foundation is damaged or destroyed then we are also destroyed so when they come to us and they say oh i know jesus he used to in our in our book he is a prophet then we know that no that is not the same jesus they are talking about let us stay on the foundation of Jesus Christ, he died, resurrected in a glorified body, and ascended. Amen. So the question is, what kind of foundation are we building upon? This is something that we should all go home with, so that we will be able to address areas of our lives that need um, the touch of the Lord. Amen. This message has been brought to you by the faithful friends and family of Mana Mission Church here in the UK. We meet here on Sundays from 1 to 3.30 p.m. and on Fridays from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Our place of fellowship is 31 to 33 London Road in Barking, IG 1180A. For more information on how to receive ministration from any of our preachers or Reverend Ebenezer Ablo, please call 07931-105137 or 0208-594-1559. Until then, stay connected and God richly bless you. Amen. It is time for us to take Transforming our people, transforming cities. Mana Mission Church invites you to The Gospel Transforms Life. The Gospel Transforms Life at Barking Methodist Church, 39 London Road, Barking, Essex. The Gospel Transforms Life and be transformed.